My name is Jauhari Sitorus, and I'm based in the ILO office in Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm currently the project manager of Premise Impact Phase 2, or second phase. The development objective of Premise Impact uh, Phase 2 is to strengthen enabling environment for more inclusive financial services to support SMEs as such help them to grow the business, to be more resilient, and then to contribute more to economic development and job creations in Indonesia. We, are, we live in the digital era now, and so one of the sort of the um, flavor or the theme of this project, uh, which make it more interesting, uh, is to uh, promote the adoptions or the use of digital technology, uh, both by the SMEs and also the banks. And in this context, we are working with SMEs that are actually part of a value chain ecosystem. The benefit of digitalizing SME value chain ecosystems are a number. One, with the availability of digitally captured data, actually it increased the transparency of the whole transaction in the ecosystem, which in turn will help uh, SMEs to get better price, new access to finance, new markets, but also to operate more efficiently. Uh, for the banks, for the financial service providers, the, uh, the availability of digital finance actually enable them to offer financial services and product in a more convenient manner. So, uh, now we are familiar with the use of smartphone for assessing financial services bank products. We hope that this could also be replicated and used maybe to a different degree by SMEs in the ecosystem that Promise Impacts are actually providing support to. Digitalizing ecosystem is it's easier said than done. I mean, there are many challenges. Uh, at least the, the major one is digital literacy. Digital is first and foremost the most important thing when talking about digitalization of SME, especially farmers. These farmers, they are not familiar with using the apps. Some of them uh, have smartphones, but they are rarely used for any digital finance transaction. So the projects, we work with local trainers we uh, provide uh, training of trainers um, uh, support, uh, which then these local trainers will take the, uh, will in turn train the farmers. The second one is about the connection in the infrastructure of technology. Uh, in some areas, there is no connection. The quality of network uh, is is quite bad. So in this case, we uh, we have to find solution. We we try to install a new. Um, you know, a satellite uh, uh, antenna to ensure that the, the, the devices can, can communicate, can connect. And the third perhaps is the use case. Yes, use case, as you know, is a, a situation where the product or service could be used. So the reason why the farmers would be willing to move into digital platform. Because for, for some of the farmers, uh, if they don't see the benefit, or the use case, they will not move into the digital platform. So the, as I mentioned earlier, one of the use case or one of the incentive or benefit of moving into or onboarding into the digital platform is the prospect of getting credit from the banks. So we mentioned that, okay, if you're willing to learn how to use this digital platform and we'll show you how to use it, then you know your data will be able to assess by the bank and if you are you know, supplying uh, milk regularly with, with good quality, then you will get access to credits. Then you can expand your business. You can purchase, you can buy more cattle and then get more income. The biggest challenge is a change of mindset, right? So uh, again, this mindset relates to benefits or the use case, right? So if once you convince the farmers that this is, uh, this is good for you, this is good for your business, this is good for your family, you know, with more income, you can send your kids to school, you can, you know, meet your, uh, your, your basic needs, you know, you can have more savings, and they will remain. And they will automatically, with or without our project, they will continue using the platform. 
And then for the banks, I think it's more straightforward. If they see benefit of or they see potential, you know, profit to be made or business to be made out of this ecosystem, you don't need really in a, in trainings or anything else. You just provide the, the data and the, it's automatically there. And for government also, I think it's also useful because uh, um, they want to obviously in, improve livelihood of the people in, 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 in the region, in the province, in the city. So if you can show them that these projects actually bring significant and real changes of livelihood, you know, change of behavior toward the better, uh, betterness of the people, I think any um, local government would automatically support this project and continue the practice that we have started through this project. We work with policymakers and government in the regional area. Why? Because we want to make sure there will be continuity after the project ends. Right? It's too often we, you know, uh, the, the, all the good benefits of project actually stop and disappear not long after the project ends. So to make sure that we have continuity, sustainability of the impact, then we work with policymakers. Secondly, uh, we empower the local trainers. So then the, the, the skills that we have developed uh, through uh, utilization of some of the uh, modules, silo modules, be it financial education, get ahead, uh, IYB, even digitalize your business, will remain there. We would love to share more updates, not necessarily in terms of interview, but you know, written documents, event. And we hope that any lessons learned from this project could also be shared and useful for other, uh, other projects not necessarily in Indonesia, but also outside Indonesia, because I'm sure the challenges will be the same, especially in talking about digitalization of SME. It'll take years, so we need the endurance. We have to be patient about this and keep on pressing until we reach the target and the impact.